Hi and welcome back to a new video. I'm pretty sure that you followed the news that CableMod recalled their 12 volt high power adapters for 90 degree and 180 degree, both the version 1.0 and version 1.1. And while I didn't really have content about the 12 volt high power thing on my channel yet, things are kind of about to change because following the recall from CableMod, I read a lot of comments about people wanting to switch to our Thermal Grizzly WireView adapter, which I'm not sure about if that's a good idea and why we will talk about in today's video. Hetzner is a reliable hosting partner with a passion for IT. They run their own high-tech data center parks in Helsinki, Finland and in German cities such as Nuremberg and Falkenstein, which we also visited as well. And there are videos about this on my channel. They also provide their customers worldwide with simple solutions for complex issues. By merging its capabilities in cutting-edge technology, attractive pricing and competent and skilled customer service, Hetzner also increased its market share both inside and outside of Europe. As one of the leading hosts providers, they offer self-developed high-tech products such as dedicated managed and cloud servers. Aside from these products, you can also get high-quality storage products which are available everywhere at any time and of course a variety of other services for an unbeatable price. Now click at the link in the description and check out Hetzner. In the recall, CableMod stated that the adapters may be defective, which I find a quite interesting statement considering that neither us at as Thermal Grizzly for the wire you, nor cable mod is producing the connector themselves or like developing the connectors themselves. We just go to the manufacturer and buy a product that is made according to somewhat of a specification. The cable mod adapter was listed for 40 euro. The wire view is 50 euro. So they're kind of similar products. I think this has a higher production cost because of the circuit and everything on it. But I think they're still fairly easy to compare. So for example, let's take a look at the cable mod adapter, which was listed for about $40. Then you have to keep in mind that it's not only sold by cable mod directly, but also by other shops. And they also want to have their margin for sales. So let's estimate with a production cost of maybe 10 euro. This would leave us at least here in Germany when we have 40 US dollar as sales cost MSRP from the shop. We have to deduct the VAT. Then we are left with about 33.50 which leaves a margin of 23.50. This is the margin you would have to split between you as a manufacturer and the shop. So you're maybe left with, yeah, I don't know, like 10 to 15 euro margin overall as a manufacturer on these adapters. And then if you follow what was going on in the previous months, like how many cards were actually damaged, I think it's quite a lot. So just look at some of the YouTube channels and also like in between cable mods started to sell those refurbished cards on their shop. Like basically they bought off the damaged cards from the user, replaced it with, I don't know, a new card or just refunded them the original cost. So they bought off the card and then sold them again in their own shop. And if you just look at the rough amount of cases that happen on Reddit and some YouTubers and the refurbished cards they have in their shop. I think it's easy to estimate that it has to be at least 50 cards or maybe 100 cards. And then going back to the calculation, it would mean that you would have to sell at least like 10,000 to 20,000 units alone only to cover the few cases that appeared in the previous months. But then you have to obviously look at the long term, maybe the next one, two or three years that you might use those adapters. I don't know, maybe in the end it's like 500 cards you have to refund and then it's going to be an insane amount of money. So my call is probably that they, yeah, that they recalled the adapter not because it's defective, but because financially it just doesn't make sense long term. And going back to the beginning of this video talking about Wireview, I just want you to yeah, realize the reality and not have false expectations because nobody that is selling any kind of product that comes with any kind of 12 volt high power adapter can guarantee anything. That's just how it is. You are always left with the risk that something goes wrong as long as you use this connector. I can just tell you that currently we sold about 2000 units and we have an RMA rate of one piece. Well, the rate is 0.05%, but we have an RMA of one defective 12 volt high power. Even though the, the guy who had the issue told us that he was not able to fully plug it into his graphics card, 
I mean, it, it can still happen. That's just how it is. And you also have to keep in mind that even if 0.05% is a perfect RMA rate, in this kind of product, it's still not because then again, we refunded the card. So yeah, just financially speaking, it's not cool. If we just go back to the good old classic 8-pin PCIe connector, you will straight have this number of 150 watt as a limitation in your mind. And this comes from a quite old specification, which is the right reason why it's rather low. Because if you look at where the number comes from, you have the typical limitations. First off, the wire and the temperature the wire should achieve maximum. So that's basically the limitation. The more current you pump through the wire, the hotter it becomes. And then you have the connector and the contact resistance between the both pieces where you plug it in. We also did a quite interesting video about this already four years ago where we tested if it works to power uh, RTX 2080, I think it was uh, TI Strix, instead of using two or three eight pin connectors, just a single six pin and it works flawlessly, no problems at all. And that just shows what kind of margin of error you have on those connectors. I will link it down below. The reason why those connectors have such a huge margin of error is simply because it's so old that back then the PSUs were also different to what you have nowadays. Like this type 4 Corsair cable should be AWG 16 and for most of the PSUs you have either 18 or 16. 18 is the smaller one so the lower you go in size the thicker your cable becomes. And most high-end PSUs, they all have AWG 16, which means American wire gauge, gauge, so it's basically the diameter of the cable. And for example, an AWG 18 cable, which is the, the thinner one, is rated at a max current of 16 amps. But that's not a value you can calculate with, because this is typically determined at room temperature, like 20 degrees Celsius, and that's the maximum you can pump through. It is also important to know that those typical max rated values are usually for a single copper wire, like a single solid copper wire. But in a PSU cable, you typically have strand wires made out of those tiny little wires. And for this, you have to look inside a table for a correction factor. As an example, I took this Seasonic 18 AWG 8-pin PCI Express cable, cut it open, and I counted about 35 of those little wires. Going back to the chart, this means that we have to use a correction value of 0.4, which turns our max of 16 amps into 6.4 amps max. In this 8-pin PCI Express cable, you have eight wires, but we can only calculate with uh, the 12-volt wires, which are only three, and we have to ignore the ground wires. So that's why we calculate with uh, 6.4 amps times 12 volt times three wires, which gives us a max of 230 watt. As you have noticed during the entire 12 volt high power drama, it is usually not the wire itself that is causing the issues, but the connector. And if we look at what is built into an 8 pin PCIe connector, this is also called a mini fit connector. It also depends on your exact wire, so not only the diameter, but also material and how many like tiny wires it's built of. But you can estimate that if you use like a 16 or 18 AWG wire, you can draw between 6 to 8 amps according to specification from this mini plug. So again, if you do the math, you take this 6 to 8 amps, we are left with a total power that is possible with this cable of worst case 216 watt, and if you have just any kind of solid PSU, it will be 288 watts across a single 8-pin connector. And if you compare those 288 watts, which is specification, with the specification of the 150 watt, it just shows what kind of margin of error you have in those cables. Looking at the case of the RTX 4090, the card is rated at 600 watt. So it's obvious that we could just power this card by four times eight pin and thus have the 600 watt that is this kind of specification. But since we know that a single cable is actually rated with 216 watt worst case, we are left with an actual power supply of 864 watt. Now the thing is that most good power supplies, they have the 288 watt cables, which means that with four times eight pin connectors, you would be able to deliver 1152 watts within specification. This would mean a margin of safety of 1.9.
And if you now think about that in reality a 4090 typically, typically draws about 450 watt instead of 600, we have a margin of safety of 2.5, which is a lot. Even without doing any kind of calculations, it's obvious. So if you use 4 times 8 pin, you would deliver 12 times 12 volt wires to the card. Whereas if you use the 12 volt high power connector, it's only 6 wires that supply 12 volt to the card. So that's half. According to what you can find online, a single pin in this connector is specified at a max of 9.2 amps. That leaves us with a total of 55 amps for the entire connector. That's a total of 660 watt. And the peak of 4090 with 600 would give us a margin of safety of 1.1. If you calculate with the 450 watt, it would be 1.5. But there's a huge difference between like four times eight pin, that's 2.5 margin of safety. And here it's 1.5. There's a small thing I want to add right here because the data we're just looking at with the 9.2 amps, those are about the updated 12 volt high power connector, which will be called 12 volt two by six, at least according to the leaks on Igor's lab. And that's the 9.2 amps we're talking about. That is about the new connector, not about the old one. The old one is much worse. And according to Igor's lab, the 9.2 amps are about 30 degrees Celsius above room temperature. So a total of about 50 degrees Celsius. Igor also checked this a while ago and he had like 65 degrees Celsius roughly under load on the adapter. And I'm not sure what the result of this be, but let's just estimate it drops from like 9.2 amps to maybe 8.5 amps. This would drop it from like 660 watt peak to 610 watt. So your margin of safety is just completely gone. And that's also the reason why we decided to make this adapter this way. This is also a wire view, but it's also an adapter at the same time with three times eight pin to 12 volt high power. And the reason for why we picked only three times eight pin is because it's simply enough. If you just read the like basic specification and you know that even with a bad cable, a single eight pin can deliver 216 watt. Yeah, well, three times 216 that's more than enough of this. And if you use good cables, three times 288, yeah, no problem. In my opinion, the RTX 4090 is the problem in itself. Because if you just look at the size of the card, you have a problem with the wiring, no matter what. In most cases, like literally the case you want to fit your graphics card in, you just don't have sufficient clearance for good cable management. You are forced to push your wire down, because just look at this, what Seasonic is recommending. If you want to bend your cable, you should leave 35 millimeter before the radius of the bend even starts. So in total, you need like this size on top of your GPU, which is in a lot of cases, it's just not possible. That is why so many people at the beginning right ordered the 90 degree or 180 degree adapter from CableMod, simply because there is no space to fit the cards with a normal, like according to specification, bend into your system. And the thing is with those cables and bending the cables, yeah, there's a lot of room for errors. And I had to experience this myself. This is also part why I'm making this video. In one of my recent reviews, I had a lot of issues with this card and it took me a long time to figure out what was going on. I'm pretty sure you know this feature with this red LED right here that lights up if the connector is not plugged. Just helping you as a guidance that if the connector is not plugged or you miss anything in the cable management that you know something is wrong and has to be fixed. And now I want you to look at this case. This is the Type 4 Corsair cable that I've been using for quite a while. You can see it's fully plugged there is no gap or anything in there. And if I move it slightly, the red light starts to light up. And the thing is, even in the case where, let's say you fully have in the right, like orientation, right position, I'm going to show you some footage of my review I did several weeks ago, where I had a lot of issues with this card or the cable, because I was trying to benchmark PUBG and the system was running fine in idle, but whenever there was a long load, it just shut off. Just like OCP on the card or like OCP on the PSU. And it took me quite a while to figure out what was wrong. Because, I mean, in my case, it looked like the cable is perfectly plugged. It's pushed all the way in. And even in this state, 
it will cause issues and not work properly. I've been doing this for quite some years and I never had this kind of problem with the traditional 8-pin connectors, so like 6-pin connectors, only with this cable. And I also double-checked, obviously, that it's not the graphics card, but if I just use any other 4090, it's doing exactly the same. Only that here you have the additional indication with the red LED. And to recap the problem, if you look at the solution with 4 times 8 pin, the problem is the old spec that is still listing the typical 150 watt, where in reality you have like 216 to 288, which leaves us with a huge margin of safety that does not exist on this connector. And the other problem is that it's a single connector. If anything on this connector fails, let's say you have a problem with a single pin, it will heat up the entire connector and thus also influence the other pins. Whereas, let's say you have 4 times 8 pin, then if one of these has an issue and heats up, it won't impact the other three. There is still enough if something fails, which just doesn't exist here. So it just leaves me with asking NVIDIA to stop using the connector in this setup. The best fix, I mean, 4 times 8 pin is probably not going to happen, but the best fix for the 4090 would just be to use two of these or for any other card that uses this amount of power. Obviously, it's not necessary for like a 4070 or something like that. But for a 4090, the best way would be to use two of these because if one fails, you still have the second one. And even if some pins fail, you still have some pins left and you have the second connector. You're basically left with the same margin of safety that you had with 4 times 8 pin if you use two of these. That would be the correct thing to do. Because, I mean, everything else would just be insanity, right? Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting oh, shit. shit to change. That is crazy. NVIDIA just stopped using this garbage solution with a single connector. By now, we had so many failures that you should realize this will not work. Even if you shorten the sense pins, I mean, the, the thing that I have, this, this failure here, will not be fixed by shorting the sense pins because the, the adapter is fully plugged and there is always the, yeah, the possibility that something goes wrong. And I'm not sure, like right now, it looks like we just have damaged cards, but when things melt and they're close to burn, it's just a matter of time until things really burn. And I mean, if a house burns down in the end, then I'm waiting for Nvidia what to do. Because right now, I don't think that it's, it's good what's going on. And even with the cards that are being produced now, it's not like you couldn't push your partners to move to two of those connectors. And I'm not sure what's going to happen with 5090. Maybe they already did some changes for this. Obviously, that's something we will find out two days before the card launches or maybe due to some leaks. But right now, I'm far from being happy about this situation. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.